How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. Well, my royal family, what do we have here? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Decent chance Van Dyke's sentence will be tossed. Hmm. Well, I've been doing my research, my royal family. You see how much time I have devoted to this video. Stop everything you're going, doing. This one of them, them one of them type of videos. It surprised me too. Now, I be lying to the royal family. Y'all been hearing me talk about them 16 bullets and how America was going to, how was they going to justify that? So what little here I'll read. Some legal ex experts believe there is a reasonable chance the prison sentence of less than seven years imposed on a white Chicago police officer last week for second degree murder in the fatal shooting of black teenager Laquan McDonald 16 times can be tossed out in a new sentencing order. I was like, what? Oh shit, as the plot thickens. Now I ain't gonna get too damn excited cause I know what system that we are living under as it dies. Ain't it sweet, my royal family? So, we're going to look at the judge. This is Vincent here. Um, you know, he, he about that life. Fuck you and everything about you. And uh, we ain't going to lose sight of Van Dyke's weak will. Ay. So it was like, well, what's going on? What's going on? Well, they didn't, they didn't slipped up. <clears throat> they didn't check everything real good when they was, you know, lining up that sentencing. Cause I was saying, you see how it's going back to back. The cops, they let off them, the, did the cover up. And then the very next day, bam, it was obvious. We seen what was going down. Cause I was saying it don't take that long to sentence. I ain't no fool. I'm not acting like I know the law. But come on, come on. So, old Kwame, he's the attorney general, a brother. I didn't know. I honestly, I didn't know. Now, Kwame ain't feeling it at all. He didn't pull rank on these motherfuckers. Ooh, and they piss. Ooh, they real piss. Oh, I got something juicy for you, my royal family. I mean, this is like real hot off the press. I mean, like real hot. This ain't even been up 10 minutes. As I'm doing my research, this pops up. And I'm like, oh, he gonna speak on it. So we gonna listen to it. Oh, yes, we is. We gonna listen to it right now. We gonna hear what the brother is talking about. General for the state of Illinois, Kwame Raoul. General, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Good morning, Rick. Thanks for having me. I believe that's the first time I've gotten the chance to refer to you as General Raoul. For you, Rick, it's always just Kwame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> Take it while you can, General. <laughs> yeah. Well, right, how about you? Well, thank you for joining me this morning, and I think we should probably go to the top of the news here because it's something that's been in the news for the last couple of days, and that's about uh, your office, the Attorney General's office, uh, reviewing uh, the sentence that was received by uh, Jason Van Dyke uh, over the uh, killing of Laquan McDonald. Uh, can you tell us what exactly, what, what, what is the procedure and what is the legal basis for this review? Yeah, I, you know, I'm not going to delve too deep uh, into it for, for um, reasons that we haven't fully, we haven't even obtained the record of, of uh, the proceedings. And so it's, for, it's difficult for me to get too deep into this particular issue because I haven't, I wasn't witness to, um, you know, every day or any days of the trial and, um, and the sentencing um, proceeding itself. Uh, I have read sentencing mem memoranda. I have read uh, case law um, that speaks um, pretty accurately to this uh, situation. 
situation and that uh, based on that review and based on review of my staff uh, the uh, pilot staff um, within the office uh, we we thought uh, it merited further review of, of the record and uh, we we have been in touch with the special prosecutor's office um, and um, you know working in collaboration with them to obtain the record and to to, to review uh, the circumstances of this sentence which uh, based on uh, case law seemed unusual well and, and the issue being of uh, the, the, the question under case law under Illinois Supreme Court about which is the more significant charge uh, or, or offense uh, second degree murder or the aggravated battery counts the 16 counts there in the in the judge's decision the, the aggravated counts basically were tossed because of his belief that uh, uh, second degree murder was the more serious crime that occurred and the sentencing occurred there uh, although it would appear that Illinois Supreme Court uh, decisions and case law deem that uh, the aggravated battery count is the more serious those are more serious charges am I summing that up correctly uh, yeah I mean the, 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 there is a there is a case um, that does speak to these two specific charges uh, being uh, juxtaposed against one another um, in, 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 in a situation where a court had to make a decision on which was a more serious um, count to sentence on. Let me say this, uh, uh, Rick, it's, you know, because I've seen how the notion of the Attorney General's office being um, involved in this being characterized as unusual. Um, to be clear, uh, during um, uh, Attorney General Lisa Madigan's tenure, uh, first of all, I started my career out as an appellate, criminal appellate lawyer in the Cook County State's Attorney's Office. At that time, uh, Cook County pretty much handled its appeals all the way up to the Supreme Court or uh, U.S. Supreme Court if, if, if um, if the occurrence uh, dictated so. Cook County on its own would do that. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, since such time, uh, the Attorney General's office has, in the interest of keeping sort of a uniform approach to what type of um, case law is uh, uh, created by appeals to the Supreme Court, the Attorney General's office has asserted itself in uh, criminal appeals from throughout uh, the state, uh, because what may arise out of Cook County or Vermilion County or um, you know uh, wide variety, uh, any one of the 102 counties taken up to the Supreme Court has impact beyond that just that that county of origin because it impacts law for the entire state. So it is not uh, not at all unusual for the Attorney General uh, to be. Um, engage um, in, in, in these sort of matters that would, would go to the Supreme Court. Uh, with regards to writs of mandamus, uh, specifically, uh, there were three occasions last year. So the characterization of the Attorney General's office being engaged in reviewing such a case um, is just inaccurate. Um, on its face. Uh, secondly, I want to just say one thing. I, I, I want to applaud the special prosecutor uh, for being for his willingness to take on the case in the first place. And we have got to go back to the origin of the case, where where the judge uh, called around to uh, different uh, prosecutors outside of Cook County to to see who would be willing to step up. And and Joe McMahon was willing to step up. It was no small decision to make. Um, so I applaud him for one taking on the case and 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 doing a good job. Obviously, you know we're we're still in that you know the the fallout of, of, of that sentence. But I guess I'm I'm curious. And you you mentioned there were three times seeking rid of mandamus. But I mean, is it is it routine for the uh, attorney general's office to look at criminal sentencing? 
uh, or is it something that gets flagged to the attorney general's office? Each individual circumstance um, is, is different. You know, most of the cases that go up um, in appeal are, you know, defendants' appeals. Um, right. So. That's that's what I mean. It's somewhat unique here because it's not. Indeed, you don't have a, really a defendant's appeal going on. Right, but it's but but it's not unique that the AG's office is involved. Right, the AG's office is going to be involved uh, regardless if it's a, if a matter that's being considered. Sure, uniformity yeah. and that kind of thing. Right. So you know, I've seen characterization of um, our office's involvement as unusual on on that basis, which is just totally inaccurate, you know, questioning what sta- standing the Attorney General, Attorney General's office has, and that's, that's, um, that's just off. General, you've been in office for a couple weeks now. Um, how, what other areas of advocacy do you see yourself uh, uh, pursuing now that you've actually got the full mantle of the office around you? The Attorney General's office has a wide reach, and I've been, um, you know, I knew it ahead of time, but I, I didn't know it to the extent that I know it now. Um, um, <laughs> after after two weeks, welcome to the like, job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> two weeks that seems like two years because, you know, the, we, first of all, you know, I've got to really applaud Lisa Madigan for recruiting and retaining uh, a, a group of lawyers that are real superior lawyers uh, who are uh, under compensated not only as compared to um, private sector lawyers with their type of experience their type of pedigree um, but compared to other public sector lawyers of um, uh, public sector employers of, of, of lawyers and uh, you know we've got a really high quality staff uh, in, in all across the office but but to answer your question we're, we're involved in both criminal and civil appeals we a general law section that uh, uh, government representative section that has general law cases where we're defending the the state. Uh, we're involved in child welfare cases, workers' comp cases. Uh, we've got an environmental section. We've got a public interest section that does anything from civil rights, antitrust to uh, um, you know uh, some of the what you would characterize as the Trump invo- involve. Uh, you know, multi-state uh, involved litigation uh, against some of the high positions that the federal government have, has been taking. There's a consumer protection uh, division. Um, we have got a criminal enforcement division where we go in uh, to the counties at the invitation of uh, county state's attorneys to help uh, prosecute uh, cases. Uh, we have a crime victim services uh of the office, and we've got uh, legislative advocacy, uh, legislative affairs, and um, so it's it's very broad in its nature. There's also the public access uh, office that's often sp- spoken about, where we deal with FOIA and Open Meeting Act uh, complaints of uh, uh, local governments or uh, state government agencies. Um, I probably haven't touched everything. <laughs> but, uh, but so that's so that's is. just day one. Day two is <laughs> it's, it, it's quite broad. Day one, you know, I get sworn in on the fourteenth, and I think you know on the fifteenth we had maybe two or three cases that uh, we were arguing um, before the Supreme Court, the state Supreme Court, um, involving at least one criminal sentencing matter. So that speaks to the question of how unusual. Uh, the Attorney General's office is uh, uh, to be in the Supreme Court. You know, day two of my job, we were arguing in the Supreme Court about it, about a sentencing matter. Day three, we were in the in the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, so, welcome so, to the hot seat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're speaking with Kwame Raoul, the Attorney General of the State of Illinois. I'm Rick Pearson. This is the Sunday Spin. Welcome back to the Sunday Spin. I'm Rick Pierce from the Chicago Tribune here in the Allstate Skyline studio, joined by my good friend Brian Bernadoni from the Chicago Association of Realtors. And we're speaking to the Attorney General for the state of Illinois, Kwame Raoul. And, uh, General, you touched on some of the office duties that, uh, you know, the vast 
various uh, departments within the Attorney General's office. Uh, you, you touched on the one that deals with uh, FOIA, uh, mm-hmm. the Freedom of Information Act, an open meetings request. And I, I guess there's still some... Qu- I'm going to stop it right there, my royal family. Uh, we don't need to hear all that stuff that's going on. Y'all can listen to the last part of it. And you know what? I think I slipped up. Um, let me check here. I think I made a little bit of a mistake. Yeah. I made a little bit of a mistake. So I'm doing shit a little backwards. I'm being dyslexic right now. Um, but I still want y'all to hear this 28 seconds. Sign there might be a sentencing related appeal in the Jason Van Dyke case. Van Dyke was sentenced last week for the killing of Laquan McDonald. Today, the Illinois Attorney General's office says it's reviewing his sentence and the law to make a determination. The reason behind the review is not clear. Van Dyke was sentenced to almost seven years. With good behavior, he could be out in three. Van Dyke said, Leave it right there because the rest of the shit don't even mean anything with his racist ass attorney. So, I have did a lot of research on this, and let me go back. Let me check something here. No, th- this is not um, the um, article. I'm going to have to re-pull that article back up. Let me see here. Um, was it this one? Yes. This is the article that has to be read because it gives a full breakdown. I really would um, want y'all to consider reading it because you see me just scrolling up here I read it all and I'm like damn that's a lot to read and to hold the royal family's attention um, and stuff so um, check that out and so um, I'm not going to get overjoyed or anything like that because we know how they get down in this system but I imagine this white boy right here, he real pissed because he going to have to explain himself Um, because I've been saying it over and over. America, how do you explain away 16 bullets? Really? And um, I know that um, they will, um, I know that this brother, uh, for him to even put his neck out on the line, you know, um, I don't have a lot of faith in um, politicians, but if one is trying, I'll say, okay, I'll thank you for that particular incident. If he can, if if Kwame can, Raul, that's his last name, if Kwame can make um, this sentence turn around, I'll thank him for that, for that particular thing, because we have to not lose sight. There will be things that will be done to make us feel some kind of way. But then when you look at the overall body of work that these politicians have um, executed, um, it ain't a good look. It ain't a good look at all. So we're getting more and more politically savvy. So we'll watch this real close. Kwame, um, we're going to watch this real close, and um, the royal family, uh, we need to con- keep continuing to do what we do, um, talk to the universe, I cannot emphasize it more, and um, we so should see, but you know, we ain't going to get overly joyed and stuff, and um, as I close this out, uh, Van Dyke you gonna feel some kind of way there ain't no motherfucking way that you just gonna get off that easy because the one law that you cannot escape is y'all's law at all Van Dyke so you sit your ass in that prison your greasy ass and ponder on that eventually all of y'all are pay for the injustice and the horrible things and the negative things that y'all have done to the royal family. We are out of our captivity. America, we out of our captivity. Just watch 
how the royal hand really get down on your ass. It's time for you to pay up and balance things out. And it's going to weigh down heavily on your soul. What little soul you got. So my royal family. Render your voice with your beautiful divine words. And as always my royal family. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your support. And with that said. Ashe. Ashe.